Welcome back guys. Last time we made Mark Rober's half-size nerf blaster 100% stronger. This time we're taking it to the extreme. Ow, it hit my foot. So stick around because we're going to see how this beefy boy compares to the original and we're going to see how both of these compare to an actual nerf gun that you can get for 10 bucks at Walmart. I'm also going to show you how you can make these yourself but fair warning after you see this you might not want to. First I needed to do some digital surgery on Mark's full-size blaster so that I could actually print this thing on my Prusa Mini. To do this, I made some strategic slices in the frame and added some tabs for alignment. Tolerances are a little bit tight and I needed to bust out the plumber's epoxy to make up for my subpar 3D modeling abilities, but hey, we got there in the end. Now that I knew I could print this thing in multiple parts, I knew I could fulfill one of your guys' most requested modifications, which was to extend the blaster into a big old Nerf rifle. So I made another strategic slice and literally just copy pasted the middle section to extend it the full, I don't know, third. Same sort of deal with the plumber's epoxy, same sort of deal with the tolerances, but those don't matter and you'll see why in a second. I also thickened this thing up a full 125% since it works so well on the small scale blaster. And this thing is definitely harder to prime and it certainly sounds, ow, like it could pack quite a punch. My, literally my ears are ringing from that. That's pretty crazy. What we've got at the end of all this is a bulky bohemoth of a blaster that is also modular, meaning if you wanted to, you could make this thing infinitely long and in theory, infinitely more powerful. So let's test that theory. But first, if you couldn't tell by my raspy, sultry voice, I am pretty dang sick right now, but I am hopelessly addicted to the dopamine that your kind attention brings me, so thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying this content, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, and if you would like to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thanks very much. Back to the content. Welcome to the football field, the most American of measurement devices. It's got bleachers, it's got forks, it's even got a skeleton. It's raining now. Great. First, I tested the original full-size blaster, and it was able to launch its little plastic pellet a respectable 10 yards from the 50 to the 40. However, to my surprise, the beefier blaster did not launch its dart as far as the original. It only went about 5 yards. What's up with that? Some interesting things going on there. First, you can probably tell that I have an art degree and not an engineering degree based on uh, all of this business. However, that doesn't matter when you look at how the whole mechanism works when primed overall. Check it out. First of all, pretty hard to prime this thing. It's, it's obviously meant as a demonstration for children. So you want a child to be able to actually operate it. That's why I assume they didn't go as powerful as they possibly could have. Furthermore, when we are primed, look at how these springs are deforming. You can see as we get further down the muzzle, the less they actually deform, the less energy they are actually storing. And in the end, look at that. Significantly less travel distance for our little, uh, what do you call it, dart pusher at the end there. And like I said, no engineering degree, but I think what's happening is that all of the energy is actually being absorbed by the material that the blaster is made out of. And as we extend the device, the more material we use and the inefficiencies in the flexibility in this PLA is compounding. So if you were to actually try to extend this thing infinitely long, I don't think you could get much further without having a blaster that doesn't even work at all. You can see it even bows out up here when we prime it. And in fact, if you look at even the original quarter size blaster, they all do that to some extent. Interesting, huh? It just all of the energy just goes back into bringing what should be rigid supports back into shape rather than transferring the energy all the way down to the end. So it appears that a former NASA engineer might, I don't know, know what they're talking about and might have released the best version of their design on the first attempt. After all this messing around, I would honestly recommend you just print the original full-size blaster, if you can, without any modifications. Credit to Mark, he knows exactly what he's doing. That being said, I will still be uploading these very imperfect STL files if you're interested in messing around with them. I have improved them a little bit since I made these, but fair warning, they're still a little janky. You can have them if you want. But wait, you haven't seen how these stack up compared to an actual Nerf gun. To the surprise of myself, perhaps not to you, an off-the-shelf Nerf blaster just absolutely demolished our 3D printed attempts at replicating its abilities. 
just absolutely no contest. These are well and truly not good Nerf blasters. They are full on science educational tools for children, which is wonderful and fine. But if you want a Nerf blaster, just get one for half the price of a spool of PLA. And because this is a YouTube video, I will have fun little Nerf blasters such as this one linked down below. I had no idea they were making Nerf blasters this powerful these days. To be fair, we weren't really a Nerf blasters in the house kind of household growing up, but these things are super fun and they, they kind of hurt. So if you know more about this than I do, which I guarantee you do, leave me a comment. Let me know how you want to see me mod this thing because I really want to try it now. If you want to check out the video where I turned this thing into a 100% stronger little grappling hook shooter, you can check that video out right there. And I am about to lose my voice. See you guys next time.